People don't know the story about Honi. They all talk about his history in, in fighting for Māori and poor people's rights over, over many, many years. But he actually had a real job once. <laughs> he was in a union. And he got arrested on a on a on a issue, a campaign, and went to jail while he was waiting. And his bosses turned up while he was in Mount Eden. And they smug as anything, they walked in and saying, we're sacking you. And he said, what for? For not turning up for work. <laughs> <laughs> so they were all full of themselves and went back and said, finally we got rid of him. Well, after a uh, few days, the delegates turned up to visit Honey in jail and said, you know, and, to and, and Honey said what had happened. And they said, not having any of that. We're going to tell him, if he doesn't come back, we're going on strike. So a few days later, the bosses come back, the smiles have gone and said, oh, we've decided to let you come back to work. <laughs> so he went back there as the death alley when he got released, went to work, and they all went on strike. <laughs> I said, why not? Well, we're celebrating having our delegate back. They got the barbecue out and they had a day off in support of their del uh, dad's our delegate. So when you're all as good as that, then you'll be up here and taking this place. Honey, come and take it. <laughs> And just one other little story. <clears throat> the last time I was actually unemployed and out of a job was as a direct result of Magna Carta getting me <laughs> thrown out of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> when, I was, when, I, when, I, when I got the boot from the Māori Party, I was looking forward to a few cruisy months in Parliament. Magna Carta said, no, as a matter of principle, you resign from the Māori Party and you resign from Parliament and you stand again. I said, hey, that sounds really, yeah, I'll do that. And then it come time to resign, I go back home and uh, no pay and I bring Parliament and say, hey, where's my wages? And they said, no, no, mate, you're completely out of a job. So I resigned. The last time the last time I was out of a out of a job was as a direct result of your fellow's leader. <laughs> Who gets paid from going on strike? <laughs> Somebody get paid to go on strike. <laughs> so, uh, Joe, Joe Carolyn, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of all of us, thank the Irish people for rolling over letting the old blacks win the other day. We're very good yeah, at whatever, whatever. We're very good at snatching a glorious defeat from the jaws of victory. Bueno, me ia te kia tātou katoa e hae mai i hui kotahi i rungi te whakaaro ki a tū kotahi i mui te aroaro o te kawana tama e takahi ana i te mana o ngā kai mahi o rotu au te aroa. Ure, koutou e ngā kai mahi te ngā koutou, te ngā koutou ki ora tātou katoa. Um, I guess that the real message I, I, I have to say to everybody here is things aren't going to get better in a, in a hurry. They're going to get worse. And the, the pressure's going to come on you out there in those workplaces because the boss's expectation is that if they can break you, they can break everybody. So you have to be strong. Just a tip, when I used to find that I'm going to get myself into some serious trouble back in the day, I used to practice in front of a mirror. I practiced what the policeman would say to me, and I practiced what I'd say back to the policeman. Now, I'd, I'd do it a few times until I had it down pat. So when it came time to confront them, I felt really powerful. I felt like I was in charge. Problem was, they tended to ask me questions I hadn't practiced. <laughs> but anyway, when they come for you, there's some, there are some simple things to say, and when they, when they come to you with something nasty, first thing you should always say is, excuse me? Force them to say it again. Force them to say it again. When they say it again, pull out your phone, like I've got mine, mine doesn't record, but they don't know that, and say, would you mind saying that again? And hold it up to their face. You put those bastards back where they, where they belong. Don't, don't let them put that pressure on you. You put the pressure back on me and say, if you don't mind, if you mind saying it again, I intend to send this to my MP, Hone Harawira. I don't care where you're from in the country. 
if you say MP Hollyhari with it, it's likely to get a reaction. <laughs> it might also get you sacked a lot but Guaranteed they're not gonna go they're not gonna go quiet. So use those sorts of messages. Let them know that you're backed up by a lot of people. Say, I intend to send this to the Labour Party. I intend to send this to the Green Party. And I intend to send this to my MP Hone Arwira. Oh, and Matt McCartan as well. <laughs> but let them know that you're not just there for yourself or for those just in your workplace. That you are there on behalf of the, of the tens of thousands of workers that, uh, that Darren talked about and that Denise talked about. Because if they think that they can just pick on you and scare you and thereby scare everybody else in that little workplace, that's all they care about. But if they think you can come with an army, they'll think twice about it. So practice. Don't be shy to practice. You've got mates here, even if they're from a KFC over there or Burger King over there. Call them, call them and, and practice with them. Practice with one another so that you feel stronger. Make sure you've got the ones as close to you as possible on a speed dial and say, and if you don't mind, I've just rung a couple of other delegates to come along and hear what it is that you have to say. Don't ever roll over for these bastards. Never. Never roll over. Um, and as far as we're concerned over here, don't roll over for us either. <laughs> That's the right attitude. That's the right attitude. I mean, seriously, once you decide what it is that you want after we get rid of national, you say that to us. We want a minimum wage of this amount, and we want the living wage by the next, within the next three years or five years or whatever. You put it to us. You force us to say, yes, we will, or no, we won't. And then vote accordingly. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't be shy about this, folks, because it's your future that's going to be on the line. So if your future is on the line, remind us that our future is on the line as well. Hey, we don't get into Parliament unless people put us in there. And in this situation, unless the workers put us in there. So, um, I, I, liked, I liked the energy when I came in the room. I liked the fact that everybody was noisy and it took a while to shut everybody up. <laughs> don't ever go quietly into that good night. Rage, rage, rage against the machine. I'm not going to carry on. That's all I've got to say. If you've got any questions, Matt McCartney will be happy to answer them on my behalf. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh